All right, mate, how you doing? Welcome back to another episode of IMO. In this video, we're talking about the big news which has just dropped today, and that is that after 22 years in charge of Arsenal, Arsene Wenger is leaving Arsenal at the end of the season. Wenger out has officially happened. What do we think about this? What are the repercussions? Who's going to come in next? What does it mean for the rest of the season? What will Wenger do next? Was it the right decision? Let's talk about it. Okay, the first thing we've got to do in this video is give Arsene Wenger the credit he deserves, all right? What he's done for Arsenal and in English football during those 22 years, I applaud it, right? Particularly the first 10 or 15 years of those 22 years. We'll get on to the last few later. But um, I have to say I've got a lot of respect for the man. Um, not only what he's done, but also he, he, his manner. I think he's got the sort of managerial etiquette that every manager should have. The way he carries himself in interviews, his, his loyalty, his integrity. I really like the guy and I've got a lot of respect for him. However, I've got a lot of respect for my granddad. I really like him too. Should he be in charge of Arsenal in 2018? The answer is no. So let's start off with a decision for him to leave, which he's come out and said, you know, it's kind of his decision to step down. You wonder whether he was told you need to kind of leave now, sort of, you know, jump before you're pushed type of thing. Either way, I think it's the right decision. I actually think it's come a couple years too late, personally. Some Arsenal fans will sit there and tell you about the FA Cups they've won over the last few years. Arsenal is supposed to be bigger than FA Cups, in my opinion. No, they, they need to win more trophies. They need to win Premier Leagues. They need to win Champions Leagues. That is the brand and the power of their fan base. That That's what they expect. That's what they should expect anyway. And let's face it, Arsenal have been on a downward spiral. For years, the thing that Wenger was kind of clinging to was the fact that he always got on top four. And yes, sometimes he did it with a smaller budget and weaker playing staff than some of the other big clubs. So he always got credit for that and credit where credit's due. However, last few years, he hasn't done that. This will be the second season in a row. He's missed out on the top four. He could still get a Champions League spot if he wins the Europa League. It's a big if though, because he's got to beat Atletico Madrid. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But the reality is, Arsenal's league results have been going down for a while. Of course, there was the year the Leicester won the league and Arsenal finished second. But that was a blip of a year. If you look at the general trajectory, it's been going down. And I think Wenger's time at Arsenal was actually done a while ago, you know. I think that he lost the dressing room to an extent. I don't think they've been playing for him in the way they were at the start. And I actually think his pride got the better of him a little bit over the last few seasons. Now, a lot of people are going to have a go at me in the comments. They're going to say, I should be heaping praise on Wenger because of what a legend he is and how loved he is. And I feel the same about him. Don't get me wrong. I've got a lot of respect for him and a lot of time for him. It doesn't mean to say him staying 22 years was the right thing. And for the next few weeks, that's what's going to happen on media, on TV. We're going to see people talk about how great Wenger's been for Arsenal. And, and good, I'm glad he's getting the send-off he deserves. It would have been a better send-off if he hadn't have taken the club into a bit of a decline first, but it's done. I actually think that might be part of the reason why they've chosen to announce it before the end of the season rather than waiting at the end so that he gets this send-off. But it could have repercussions, this decision. They've got a semi-final to play. You've got to ask yourself, by announcing that he's leaving before that semi-final happens, it's going to have either one of two effects. Either it's going to kind of like energise the players to play for Wenger because they want to give the old man a send-off, the send-off he deserves, all that sort of stuff. Or it could go the other way, and it all comes down to the mentality of the Arsenal players, but the other way it could go is that they sort of don't need to play for him anymore because they know he's ultimately not going to be deciding if they keep their jobs next season, if they get transferred, whether they start in the team, etc. It's going to be a new manager's job, so they might feel less motivated. It's a bit of a risk because they do need to win the Europa League if they want to get in the Champions League. But maybe the board are looking at it as more of a rebuild era. They're saying, we'll miss out on Champions League again if we have to, maybe again next year, in order to slowly revolutionise the club back to where it belongs. Now, there will be some comparisons made with the end of the Fergie era, which happened a few years ago at Manchester United. We have to point out these are very, very different situations. Fergie had a long period of time at Man United, yes, but his was successful throughout that time, and he left on the back of winning the Premier League with a squad that probably wasn't good enough to do it. Arsene Wenger is leaving in a very different situation where he's covered probably underperforming a little. I don't think their, their squad competes with Man City and the like. They haven't spent that money, so they shouldn't be expected to get first, second, etc. But you look at a club like Tottenham, also their North London rivals, you'd say, why can't Arsenal be competing with them? There's no reason financially they can't. So in some ways, by finishing maybe fifth, sixth, even seventh, they are underperforming. What that means is the new manager coming in won't come in with the same amount of pressure that Fergie's replacement, David Moyes, did. Moyes inherited like an overperforming, aging Man United squad and was almost destined for failure. I think people knew it was going to happen. With Wenger, someone's inheriting a club with some decent players, like so obviously Aubameyang being brought in recently, Mkhitaryan. There's a lot of room for improvement still. They need some probably defenders and midfielders to improve that overall squad, maybe a new goalkeeper. But they're not performing that great. So all the new manager has to do is, is keep the same status quo of around 6th, 5th, 
and he's done the same as Wenger. If he can break back into that top four, it's a huge improvement. So it's actually a really good time for a new manager coming in at Arsenal. Who will that be? Tuchel seems to be the name thrown about a lot. I know Patrick Vieira has been talked about. I think whoever it is, it's important they come in and lay the law down at Arsenal pretty early on. Don't let players get away with anything. Make sure they know who the boss is. It's easy to sit here and throw blame at Wenger and say his pride got the better of him and all this stuff. You know, a lot of the reason for their downfall in recent years, and I say downfall, it's not dramatic. It's not like they got relegated or anything, but they have got a little bit worse. It's actually with the board. You know, the board should have the blame at their feet as much as Wenger, if not more. And if that board doesn't start to change the way they make decisions, then the new man will be destined for failure as well. However, I think the board have started to turn around. They've started to spend more money like we saw with Aubameyang in January. And I think the reason Arsenal were really kind of struggling was a combination of having the wrong manager at the wrong time in Wenger and the wrong board. I think the board they've got with the right manager could still, I'm not saying they're going to go back to the old ways of the Invincible season, but could definitely do better than they are. But we should talk about Arsene Wenger's legacy. You know, what is he leaving behind? And it is a great legacy. What he's done early on in the club in terms of winning the leagues, winning the doubles, then in the Invincible season in 2003, 2004, which was sensational. We might never see the like again. You know, everyone talking and heaping praise on Man City under Pep Guardiola. They didn't get close to going invincible. We may never see another manager like Arsene Wenger. He might be the last long-term, over multiple decades manager that we see in modern football. It's not the way football is right now. We're much more likely to see what's happening at, at Watford, which is replace your manager every year, or maybe twice a year if you can. Uh, and Watford, in some ways, being justified by making those sort of decisions. It's not romantic. It's not what football fans want to see. They want a long-term relationship with the manager. Uh, Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool seems to be quite a good connection right now. I think it'd be great to see that last for a few more years, as long as, obviously, Klopp's performing and Liverpool fans love him like they do. But there's almost no way that Klopp is going to be 20 years at Liverpool, even if he continues to have success. It's just not the done thing anymore. So we have to applaud Arsene Wenger for his staying power, for the consistency, the level of consistency he probably had for 20 of his 20 two years at Arsenal in terms of Champions League qualification. If he can finish though with the Europa League win this year, which I think is a big if, I'm not sure they're going to beat Atletico Madrid over two legs, but let's just say they do. What it will mean is he adds something new to his legacy in his first European trophy. Arsenal have never won one with Arsene Wenger before. And what it will also do is it will force some Arsenal fans to say, what if? What if we'd left Wenger on? Maybe he needed just one more year, but the answer is no. It's the right thing to do. Trust me, Wenger needs to move on now. Even if you win the Europa League, it's the perfect ending to Wenger's career, and it means he leaves a hero. I'd love that to happen, personally, as a neutral. I always cheer for the English teams in European tournaments. West Ham are never in there, after all. But if it does go wrong, and you crash out in the Europa League semi-final, then again, it's another indication that it was time for Wenger to move on. So either way, it's definitely the right decision. There is no guarantee Arsenal will get it right with the next manager. It could be a period of transition. But as I've said already, unlike Manchester United, I don't see even a manager coming in and not working out doing any worse than Wenger's doing. It would be unbelievable to me if they brought in a manager and he finished lower than, say, sixth. I, I just can't see it happening. Unless they buy really poorly in the summer window, I think a new manager will come in and at least maintain what Wenger's been doing over the last few years. Who that manager should be... There's a lot of different people being talked about. Some people think Allegri from Juve would be the man for the job. I don't know why he'd leave Juve for us unless he wants a new challenge. Two shores we've mentioned seems to be a main candidate. Some people would like to see Simeone from Atletico Madrid come to Arsenal. I'd argue that his defensive way of playing is not the, the traditional Arsenal way. And I imagine a lot of Arsenal fans want to try and keep that in the post-Wenger era. You know, the, the free-flowing passing football. I, another reason that I think it's a shame Wenger didn't leave a few years ago is there was this managerial land grab that happened when the likes of Pep and the likes of Mourinho and Klopp were all becoming available and Arsenal missed on some top quality managers. I think Pep Guardiola at Arsenal would have been unbelievable because he wouldn't have had the most money in the league like Man City. He would have had to prove himself that little bit more because even though I'm a big Pep fan and I think it's impossible to ignore what he's done, a lot of people are saying, oh, of course he's bought the league at Man City. How hard is it to win with Man City and Bayern and Barcelona? If he'd gone and been successful at Arsenal, I think it would have it would have convinced a few Pep critics. But alas, they missed out on Pep. They missed out on Mourinho, whether he would have been right, I'm not sure. I think Klopp would have been an amazing fit for Arsenal, but they missed out on him. So it remains to be seen who they do get in as manager. But I do think it's the right decision for Wenger to step down. I'm not sure if the timing was right. I think they could have maybe left it to the end of the season, but it's better than not doing it. I have a lot of time for Wenger, a lot of respect for him. He's a top quality guy and I wish him the best. I don't think he's going to retire. I really don't think he'll retire. I think we'll see him in another job. Maybe he could be more suited to international football, maybe after the World Cup. If France don't do as well as they could or the manager Deschamps moves on, Wenger could come in. I'd like to see him in that job. But he'll probably never find a job that fit him as well as the Arsenal job did. I mean, it was literally a match made in heaven. Arson at Arsenal. 
You can't write that stuff. He's had a good run. He's had a long run, maybe too long, but fair play to you, Arsene You've done very well indeed. Thank you for being part of English football. You've left your mark, that's for sure. And you'll be remembered for a long, long time as one of the great managers. Even though his form at Arsenal hasn't been amazing over the last few years, filling his shoes is still going to be an incredibly hard job for the new manager because of the, the way that the club was almost built around Arsene Wenger's vision. There was probably no one in senior staff roles at Arsenal that had been there as long as Wenger had. So the club will change dramatically, but I think it's for the best. And I'm excited as a neutral to see how Arsenal do next season. I get a lot of stick sometimes for calling out Arsenal or talking about Arsenal, and I think that's largely because of the crazy decisions that have been made at the club or lack thereof under Wenger and under the board. And I'm excited to see that change. I talk about Arsenal a lot. One, because they're very noteworthy. Like, there's always stuff being talked about them in the press. But also because a lot of my friends are Arsenal fans. And I've probably grown up spending so much time watching Arsenal. They're probably the team I've watched most outside of West Ham. That it's not me wanting to put them down all the time. It's actually me wanting them to see them do well. I don't like the idea of unfulfilled potential. And I think that's what they've had over the last few years. But I think it could change. What do you think about the future of Arsenal in the post-Wenger era? Who do you want to see come in? Do you think it was the right decision for him to leave? Do you think the timing of the announcement was good or bad let me know in the comments below drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it subscribe for more make sure you click the notification bell so you know whenever i upload a new video i've been uploading a little bit less frequently recently but i've got some big stuff planned for the world cup stay tuned for that i'm also going to finish my mission fuck champs series as well maybe I have to get a tattoo i'll see you on the next one until then don't go changing <laughs>